Special Counsel Jack Smith has now set the perfect trap to put Judge Eileen Cannon on the spot where if she rules unlawfully, Jack Smith will go to the 11th Circuit and try to get Judge Eileen Cannon removed. And he hasn't used that express language in the reply brief that he filed on a Friday evening, but it certainly is implied in it. And Donald Trump, either inadvertently or just based on his deranged conduct, opened the door for Jack Smith to do this, overplayed his hand as always, as Judge Cannon's trying to help him out. So you know that Donald Trump was lying and saying the FBI and DOJ were trying to assassinate him, which is just totally false, and Donald Trump claims the use of force policy used on every search warrant executed in the United States, he claims was specifically targeted to kill him. And as a result of that, there have been numerous death threats and violent threats of violence against DOJ and FBI officials, this is now a life or death matter. So special counsel Jack Smith went to Judge Eileen Cannon and said, Judge, you need to modify the conditions of Donald Trump's release. In other words, you need to put a gag order on him, directing him to stop. No court would ever allow this behavior to put the lives of law enforcement at risk. So you need to gag Donald Trump right now because you're going to get law enforcement killed. And Judge Eileen Cannon, kind of unsure what to do, has scheduled a hearing to address special counsel Jack Smith's uh, request to modify the conditions of Trump's release. She did it for the afternoon on Monday, and she kind of put it uh, in a schedule where she heard all of these other absurd motions that were filed by Donald Trump, where she devoted even more time to it. But here's the thing. I'm gonna, I want to use the specific language of why I'm saying that Jack Smith laid this as a trap, why I think Jack Smith's ready to go to the 11th Circuit, and how he's hinting out to Judge Cannon. If you know anything about Donald Trump, these gag orders drive him absolutely insane. Frankly, everything does, but him being gagged in any way um, is something that he whines and complains and cries about all the time. Now, the law basically requires that Judge Cannon impose modified conditions on Donald Trump's release. Donald Trump's a convicted felon now, a convicted felon. Um, he's a criminal defendant in this case. And the First Amendment does not afford him with the right, with the ability to go and lie in a way that gets law enforcement killed or uh, gets law enforcement to become the recipient of all of these threats. The First Amendment doesn't allow him to do that. As Special Counsel Jack Smith says, look, Donald Trump wants to criticize this case. He wants to criticize the Biden administration. He wants to, con he wants to criticize the Special Counsel. He wants to do all of that. Do it. We don't care. We don't care even a little bit. Our interest in that is none. What we do care about is protecting law enforcement, and he can't go and lie and claim that they're trying to assassinate him and then get them hurt or get them killed. Just last week, Special Counsel Jack Smith says in his motion, an FBI agent was threatened, had his life threatened as a result of Donald Trump's behavior. And there was also, when the case was first brought, uh, Donald Trump's conduct led to someone to go and almost uh, cause grievous harm to an FBI and DOJ agent. Enough is enough, Special Counsel Jack Smith is saying. So Judge Cannon is now faced with an issue of if she does not grant special counsel Jack Smith's request to modify the conditions of a release, thereby imperiling the safety, the, the imperiling the lives of law enforcement, then Jack Smith goes right to the 11th circuit and says, look, she's gonna get law enforcement killed. I'm bringing this to you. He may bring it as a writ. He may bring it as a uh, interlocutory appeal, but he goes right to the 11th Circuit if she's going to potentially engage in behavior that could get uh, law enforcement harmed or killed. They have an absolute duty to protect their law enforcement. Judge Cannon also knows, though, that if she rules in favor, in favor of Jack Smith, Trump and the MAGAs are going to be pissed at her and call her a traitor, and they're going to go after her. So now she's confused about what she should do. And ultimately, this is not something that she can simply like 
grant without prejudice or at this point deny without prejudice. If she engages in any funny business here at all at this point, Jack Smith goes right to the 11th Circuit. And I think this would be the type of thing where the 11th Circuit would actually remove her from the case. Now, there's language in a filing that special counsel Jack Smith made on Friday that really leads me to believe that this is his plan. And to the trained legal eye, you can really see some of the points where he is saying this. And so one of the things that uh, Jack Smith says here is uh, the following. He goes, this is on page three of a reply in support of modifying the conditions of release. No court would tolerate um, another defendant deliberately creating such immediate risks to the safety of law enforcement. And this court should not wait for a tragic event before taking action in this case. It's very personal to Judge Cannon, that point right there. No court would ever rule against what we are asking for here. And this court should not wait till somebody dies. And there, if you read between the lines, Jack Smith saying, we ain't waiting. So if you don't rule in favor of us, and Judge Cannon knows what that message is, we're gonna make sure our law enforcement is protected from Donald Trump and your lawlessness. That's where we're going to go. Then in the next paragraph, Jack Smith says, um, look, while Trump boastfully acknowledges the impact that his words have on his listeners, he will just as predictably decline any responsibility for their actions should any further violence take place. So while Trump loves that they're getting all violent, the moment they kill someone, Trump's gonna say, I don't care, but I didn't tell him to do this. He'll deny that he has anything to do with it. And then Jack Smith goes, neither the government nor this court has that luxury that Donald Trump does as a cult leader. Protecting a law enforcement is the government's duty. And we respectfully ask the court to address the serious risks posed to law enforcement and to protect the integrity of these proceedings. It's powerful language, protect the integrity of these proceedings. It is our duty to bring this to your attention. And they're saying too, if we are stopped by you, it's gonna be our duty to keep on going to protect our law enforcement here as well. Um, also in a footnote too, Jack Smith references the 11th Circuit, um, you know, also hinting out that that's where he's going and basically says, no matter what standard of scrutiny is applied uh, to the type of speech right here that Donald Trump is engaged in, it should be subject to a gag order because the type of things he's saying is going to get law enforcement killed and that needs to be stopped. Then Jack Smith concludes with the following. To protect the safety of law enforcement and the integrity of this proceeding, this court should grant the government's motion to modify Trump's condition of release. And then earlier in uh, the motion as well, they say that every court that's dealt with an issue like this, every single one of them has modified the conditions of release and imposed a gag order on Donald Trump. We're talking about the federal court in Washington, D.C., which was upheld by the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. We're talking about Justice in Goron in New York, a civil case which was upheld by the Appellate Division. We're talking about Justice Mershon, which was upheld by the Appellate Division and New York's highest court, the Court of Appeals. Quite literally, every court that's heard a Donald Trump case has had to impose a gag order similar to this because of Trump's outrageous behavior and Judge Cannon, you would be the only judge not to impose this. And that's another reason why we're putting you on notice right now. Quite literally, there is a body of case law across the country because Donald Trump can't control himself and consistently attacks jurors, witnesses, law enforcement, the judge's family, family members of uh, lawyers and prosecutors and such. So it's it, the, the, the ball's in your court now, Judge Cannon. So Judge Cannon's gonna have this hearing. 
and she's either going to modify the conditions of release or she's going to uh, reject it, at which point Jack Smith goes to the 11th Circuit. Now, what do I think Judge Cannon's going to do? I think after the hearing, I don't think she'll rule right away. I think she'll try to delay as long as possible. And I think that then Jack Smith will give a notice and basically say, we need to know immediately because there are lots of threats that are happening. So we need you to make a ruling. If we don't hear from you, we have no choice but to go to the 11th Circuit. Um, and then we'll see if Judge Cannon rules. But I think she's going to try to delay this as much as possible. That's what she's done so far. Um, but Jack Smith's putting her on notice. You're, you, Judge Cannon, you're going to get somebody killed. And if you rule the wrong way, no court would ever do that. We have a duty to protect the law enforcement. It's powerful language right here in this uh, reply brief filed by Jack Smith. The trap has been set. And, and more than just a trap, the law has been followed. And Judge Cannon, the ball's in your court. I'm Ben Micellis from the Minus Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thanks for watching. Enough! Send him to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.